It was a gloomy day on the 19th of June 2018 in Nyabimata sector, Nyaruguru district, when gunmen attacked the area, killing several people and destroying property, an attack that was later claimed by the militia group FLN. Months later, on the 15th of December 2018, FLN militia men ambushed several passenger buses in the middle of the thick Nyungwe National Park where six people were killed and others sustained life-threatening injuries to which Paul Rishasabajuna boasted about on various avenues. The attacks didn't stop at that. Various parts of Rusizi district in western Rwanda became the next target of these armed groups. On the 19th of October 2019, a terror attack was carried out and several people in Kamembe town were killed and others injured with several property looted. Come May 2020, Kalikste Nsabimana, also known as Sankara, a self-confessed spokesperson of the FLN militia, was arrested and paraded by the Rwanda Investigation Bureau. A few days later, he was arraigned before Gasabo Primary Court where he pleaded guilty to the attacks that had been carried out in the different parts of the country. Along the trial, however, he denied giving instructions to kill civilians, even though he ordered the attacks. 31st August 2020, the media was awash of news of the arrest of Paul Rusesabajina, the founding co-chair of the MRCD political coalition that funded FLN militia, which was responsible for the several terrorist attacks on Rwanda. He then appeared before court and was charged on nine counts associated to terrorism. Upon request from the prosecution on the grounds of connectivity of offenses, the trial of Paul Rusisabajina was merged with that of Calixta Nsabimana and 19 other suspects to which the High Court Chamber for International and Cross-Border Crimes agreed and started the joint trial this year. Key witnesses, including Bishop Constantine Niyomunjere, would then explain in detail how Rusa Sabajina ended up in Rwanda. Let me start with when I was at RIB, the Rwanda Investigation Bureau, and they asked me to call him, which I did. I don't think he was aware that I was at RIB, and asked me how I was, which I responded, saying that I was fine, and asked him where he was, and he said he was in the U.S., I remember that an individual whose first name I recall to be Michelle told me that I was at RIP because I was suspected of working with terrorist groups. I was shocked and immediately said I would sever all ties with Rusa Sabajina if they let me go, to which they responded that I should instead remain in touch with him and feed them information. Another key testimony that was heard was for Dr. Michelle Martin, a professor of social work in the United States of America, who was once a volunteer at Hotel Rwanda, Rusesabajina Foundation in the U.S. In her testimony, she said that Paul Rusesabajina would winked American benefactors to his foundation, that he was fundraising for a good cause, and she also went ahead to share some secret emails between Rusesabajina and the one Providence, Rubin Jisa. I had emails forwarded to me in 2009, but I did not start collecting emails. I have it in my testimony. Um, I think it was approximately May of 2010. I think it was around May of the middle of 2010. Because I remember that it was after the American attorney came here and got arrested. It was after that point that I know I was certain the inf that, that I wasn't dealing with genocide survivors. I believe it was after that point that I started taking screenshots and then I just started copying the emails. Noel Habiyademye was the third witness to be heard and informed the court that Rusa Sabajina informed him of his will to form an armed group that would help his party at the time, PDR Ihumure, to overthrow the Rwandan government. In March 2021, Paul Rusisabajina then went ahead and boycotted the trial on grounds that he did not expect justice, to which the High Court Special Chamber for International and Cross-Border Crimes decided to continue the trial without him. 
Prosecutors would then go ahead and present some of the victims of the attacks who narrated the impact these attacks had on them. Prosecution then went ahead and pronounced the penalties for the suspects once convicted, where they asked court to give Paul Rusisabajuna a life sentence and for Calixta and Sabimana a 25-year jail term. Rwandans, especially the victims of the FLN militia attacks, wait to know how the judge will rule in the terrorism-related charges against Paul Rusisabajuna and his 20 co-accused, a verdict scheduled for September 20th, 2021. Gloria Mutesi, reporting for RTV News.